The battle of Ishtarhaven since the occurrence of a serious incident in 2001 when an inmate was murdered in his cell, administration had focused mainly on cell allocation. A maximum of two prisoners per cell provided that both agreed to share a cell and a cell changed as soon as any incident was reported to the administration. However, there was no real strategy for dealing with intimidation and violence among prisoners. I didn't know what to say to him. I never know what to say to him. But it's my job and I have to say something. We met in a cell because he didn't feel safe being moved through the f Even with the guards, they can be dangerous too. He wanted to stay put, so I visited him in the one place where he Interviews with inmates and with a number of staff, as well as the delegation's own findings, disclose a strong hierarchy with racial overtones with the prison population. The prospect of being subjected to threats, extortion, or even physical violence and sexual abuse was particularly high among the very young or physically weak. His eye was swollen shut and his front teeth were chipped. He stood up straight when I arrived and he tried to look strong. Getting good at it, I must say. At Weimar Ischeshausen, the delegation became aware of a serious case of physical and sexual abuse of one prisoner by another older prisoner that had occurred a few days before its visit. Medical examination of the victim by the prison doctor had revealed hematomas compatible with the allegations. Several inmates were so afraid that they no longer dared to leave their cells, even refusing to come out for the daily hour of exercise in the open air. So each time he ratchets up the toughness a little bit more. He's working up to a place that I don't want to see. I see it on all of them. The numbness and invincibility they wear just like shackles. It's not a part of them, but it's around them and heavy, and it restricts their movement in the same way. seems to trust me and maybe The case of one 18-year-old prisoner met by the delegation at Weimar Eichthausen gives rise for particular concern. In September 2005, he was subjected to full body restraints on a mattress without blankets, using metal police-style cuffs for wrists and ankles in order to prevent him from hurting himself. I was walking Schiller's path yesterday. People doing little things, what I saw. What's always there, people buying little things. Further, he was kept undressed in his underpants. After some time, he passed urine and then soiled himself. When staff became aware of the situation during a routine check, they cut off his underpants and hosed him down with cold water to remove. Or just one boy in the cell. According to the 
documentation available, he spent a total of 84 hours under some form of restraint. For about 24 hours during this period, he was put in... After a moment, we sat facing one another across the cell. The guard was outside, and we went to we went to his case workup. I'll be retiring soon, and I want him to know what I know, so that my replacement has less power over him. I think that's fair. Conveyed a message from his parents. I'm embarrassed to even handle such a cold message, but sometimes the fact of a communication can outweigh what's being communicated. When the guard had his back turned, I handed him a folio of papers. He peeled back the cover of crack to see a little MP3 player I had bought on Chillerstrasse. Now he can lose himself when he wants. I don't know what else to do except help him do this.